this is a story it's a bit long this one it's a bit brutal so please bear with me but essentially i'm not sure if you've noticed i've, I've spoken about this person a few times here on my uh, podcast called nastia nastia is a dj who i kind of only got really jiggy to um during the pandemic really um mainly because of her youtube channel which was really good at the start she kind of interviewed some really cool people within her kind of local scene um you know people that are from the surrounding areas of ukraine and russia and stuff and people just you know within their kind of extended friendship group and it was a really good even though it was in russian or whatever language you're speaking at the time whoever she's speaking to i'm not sure if it was record whatever it may be they did surprise subtitles but they were always really detailed accounts i guess because they're not that what well, maybe not the order i don't know where it was but they're some of the better interviews i've seen with people concerning clubbing culture dance music culture techno music production in general there's a lot of real detailed answers a lot of a lot of kind of stories about coming up and what they did blah 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 and i really love that whole series that she put together on the youtube channel really really well put together but as a person she's a little bit annoying and i think at the beginning i tried to get i tried to actually arrange a couple of interviews to kind of have a just to kind of understand what goes through the mind of this person overall but after a while i kind of got put off by it because she's got a very um I say divisive kind of personality, especially online, because I think a lot of people kind of got turned off from her, from her kind of um, TMI post on social media, where she'd be like detailing her bad set, like, oh, it set went badly, and being an absolute, you know, drama queen and big baby about a set gone wrong, or somebody up, somebody basically, you know, outshining her on a lineup or something, just nonsense things, like, you know, real first world problems type of stuff, it's like, dude, relax, shut the fuck up, no one cares, it's not that big of an issue, like, keep it moving, and all these kind of, you know, TMI posts on social media with like 70 million paragraphs, so it was always a bit annoying. Then in the pandemic, she kind of ramped up her level of annoying by deciding to be one of only a few DJs who decided that, you know, they needed to perform they needed to earn a living at the behest or at the kind of detriment of the safety of the world out there right especially at the peak of the pandemic now we know that the pandemic maybe wasn't as big as an issue as they kind of once as we once believed it to be maybe they made it more they made more out of it than what it seemed to be but at the time when it was at its peak and places in the third world country and third world countries were kind of you know quote unquote were really suffering but they were also had leadership and politicians who were basically willing to leave the, the kind of you know they kind of uh, borders open in order to invite foreign um, tourists to come over because obviously the economy was suffering and they were basically willing to sacrifice the health and safety of their citizens for the money that was coming in from tourists and clubs whatever it may be now some people were taking advantage of that right and basically saying hey well if the law says that we can go there we're going to go there and it was not having any kind of morals or ethics or principles behind it it was just if the law says yes I cannot go so that we call them play, play graves right? play graves and play DJs and stuff that were kind of going around the world and just playing and not really giving a shit about where everything was going on and Nasha was one of the main people doing it right she went to I forgot where she went somewhere like Columbia and stuff and started writing stuff about whatever just nonsense right perspective in terms of optics it just looked horrible and she came out of it really bad in terms of pandemic reputation wise then as luck would have it or luck would have it not really luck because you know take it back because many people have died it's been absolutely horrible but the war obviously in ukraine happened right when the invasion of russia into ukraine started suddenly Nasha obviously being a ukrainian um, citizen um, kind of amped up the kind of uh, presence online in terms of talking about issues concerning Ukraine and the local community and the scene overall and just kind of really kind of fighting that good fight online and she completely sort of changed the narrative on herself online overnight it felt like by getting behind the whole Ukraine thing which was really interesting but then of course in typical Nazia fashion she still found a way to annoy people by then going extra hard at somebody like a Nina Kravis because Nina Kravis wasn't coming out and completely admonishing Putin for whatever reason maybe because she's pro-Putin maybe because she doesn't want to talk about politics maybe because she doesn't care who knows but for whatever reason Nazia thought it to Nazia was kind of like for it to be her right and her kind of um calling to essentially be the person to say you know nina kravis is a bad person because she's not speaking out about the atrocities that her country um fellow countrymen are basically um subjecting ukrainian people to which she has a point you know especially if you see some of the footage that's going on in ukraine you see some of the accounts you see some of the early footage i saw of that little girl you know on a bicycle playing around in the car park it looks like and then boom a missile comes it completely obliterates the entire space and you don't get to see any part of her anymore just a bike absolutely horrendous the most recent thing i saw was a lady um, who had a child with Down syndrome the kid passed away and she has her leg amputated because it blew up because of a missile or bomb absolutely heinous stuff so if you're from there or if you just got a heart and you're a human it's pretty difficult to see that happening and then see your local or see your kind of fellow 
peers in the industry who you basically think as kind of brothers and sisters or people that are kind of near you in terms of location whatnot be completely silent it can be kind of frustrating i can actually understand why that could be infuriating to the point where you just want to run people every single day but it got a little bit nauseating after time because like look everyone's allowed to say and not say what they want in public concerning these certain things some people have a very strict policy about not talking about things such as politics at all in public some people are a bit more free with this sort of stuff i think to expect people to kind of respond the way you want to respond is a little bit heinous but also i think as a fan if you was a fan of nina kravis and she didn't say nothing that you liked about the whole ukrainian war the good thing about social media the good thing about it nowadays is that if they don't line up with your politics or your worldview you can immediately stop stop stop, stop kind of supporting them you don't they don't need to be forced down your throat anymore that's a good thing kind of thing but anyway we move so it looks like Nash's next target going forward has, is going to be daria and etap kyle because I, I saw this post randomly on her telegram she's got a telegram account where she essentially uses it as a platform to basically whinge and moan right to basically everybody that's that's on her account that follows her it's basically an open diary that says yeah and it definitely is an open diary there's too much words written on here and i've taken many screenshots and to kind of make this legible but essentially um Nastya has a beef with etap kyle and daria um Kovosa, specifically i guess because they're not really responding or replying or basically acting out um, regarding the war in ukraine the same way that she wants it to be worth or maybe because of her affiliation with nina kravis i'm not really too sure but i'm going to read through the whole thing and we're going to try and get an understanding of the whole situation but this is nastia v dario Kovosa v etap kyle it's an absolutely crazy thing because if i'm not mistaken dario Kovosa and etap kyle are in a relationship so she essentially is going after two people who are fairly who she was basically fairly close to a while back and you know completely completely destroying any kind of future relationship because i guess she's not happy with their association with certain people but hey let's move so it says as follows who is Dario Kovalsa uh, sorry Kolosova my biggest mistake disappointment and shame it's interesting too because I remember if I remember correctly just to continue before I continue the the best interview actually on Nina Kravitz sorry, on last year's account on YouTube is the interview with Daria she talks about this really interesting scene that she came up in DJ wise where she had to go play in China at these topless DJ party things where they basically got paid a thousand pounds a thousand dollars a gig they all lived in some sort of quote-unquote whorehouse or pimp's house it looked like and they got basically put in a in a in a camper van and got taken around to all these different random clubs around China where these businessmen in suits used to sit and they'd have to DJ behind a deck's topless like glitter on them or something basically no bra but you know they could put like paint or something on top of them while they dj fucking crazy and she graduated from that really cringy thing into playing you know amazing techno clubs pretty interesting story i recommend you go check it out but anyway it continues the story began in autumn 2018 i was i was burning out and losing myself in what i was doing i was really struggling girl she's always a victim and always a victim anyway um i was really struggling and not feeling happy after a while of suffering i informed my agent and manager that i would leave the scene and retire soon yeah attention seeker and a fucking victim the only thing that was bothering me was my achievements and profile appeal <laughs> the ego of this woman i thought it was wrong to leave nuts to be a really to be really, i wonder if to be a really good dj you have to be incredibly narcissistic innit? you really do have to believe the world absolutely revolves around you legit if she retired tomorrow the world wouldn't miss her too tough like you'd be a couple of heart emoji broken heart emojis in your instagram account and that would be it people just move on like relax I thought it was wrong to leave um to leave it was just like that and i, I leave my management without a job as i was have always been in these main artists i start oh yeah the the, the fucking um let me stop commentating let me just read it i started to think to, to share what i have with somebody else and who could be the only one to pass along my developments leaving everything i have created with no use to anyone was not a situation that i felt like i must bring to someone else open the door to somebody else so there, there, there were two options in my mind um both what DJs for me did from Ukraine. After much thought, I researched. I chose Dario Kovalsa. <laughs> I chose you. You should be. I wanna. Back then, she was nobody. <laughs> she was doing her best to get a place on the scene, but Ukrainian community was not accepting her for some reason. One of the main one. One of them was the fact that her earlier work was. Uh, she was a topless DJ, DJ Igla from. Yeah, so I said from Lug from Lug Lug Lugansk. So no one was taking her seriously. I took some action to defend her, support her. As I love challenges, I decided she is the right one to take over as I have to go through some hard times to get the respect from the scene when I was DJ Beauty. DJ Beauty, you know? Fucking hell. The thing you have to do to make it in DJing is just horrendous. DJing in a fucking topless DJ circuit and then calling yourself DJ Beauty because you're hot, using your hotness to kind of get gigs, but then also making sure people don't, 
take advantage of you behind the scenes brutal they probably got some stories to tell in it i was not playing topless though but people would also perceive me as an entertaining dj with a cheesy image i had to work hard to get respect from uh, i about to say i wasn't talking playing topless but i was very hot she just said anyway i had to work hard to get respect from the scene and get the chance to get to get where i am right now the feeling of women's solidarity clicked inside we had lots of things in common so my path resonated with hers when i was booked for arma 17 event in berlin in 2019 i wrote to Nas the natasha abel that i'm planning to retire and i want to share what i have with daria and bring her instead of me natasha respected my message and accepted it and agreed so you're telling me that not daria has only been around since 2019 properly on the scene fuck me so so nasha did definitely help her out in, in terms of her career because she's everywhere now from 2019 only that boost anyway let's continue um and agreed that I can share my slot for, for our first B2B event in Funk House. So I did, and it was a beginning. And of course, that's what it takes really in DJing. You play one good set in a really established place, and you've got the good look about you and stuff, and you've got a good co-sign, and immediately that can kind of propel you. But to get that set is the hardest thing in the world. Um, I was the one to recognize her potential and make my agent believe in her. I brought her to the agency and started to work on pushing her forward. My ex-manager helped me to add Daria for her first boiler room. I was booked at Pasha during... Uh, I mess in 2019 and made our b2b we added her to major festivals to play with me to help her grow and get recognition she did the podcast for awakenings instead of me because i couldn't do it by that moment we gave her all the opportunities that i couldn't take and offered her instead of me all the promoters that wanted to book me it's jesus the way she's putting it she's making it seem like this girl owes her entire career to her now if somebody owes if you owe somebody if some if you owe somebody your career does that mean you should agree with everything they do can you not speak out of turn about them at all? I don't know. What do you guys think? Is somebody giving you a start? Like I've had a similar sort of issue kind of on a very small scale with somebody that kind of, you know, gave me a very great job on a flipping silver platter, but then he turned into a fucking, you know, turned into a cunt, but I, he was always a bit of a cunt, but I recognized it later on and I kind of called him out on it and I haven't really spoken to him in a good way since, to be honest, apart from a brief interaction here and there. And, um, Someone I remember once telling me that, oh, you should never speak out of turn of somebody that brought you in. She always have respect. It's like, nah, bruv. Like, if somebody pisses you off, they piss you off. doesn't matter what respect they got. Don't be going. There's still a reverence I'm always going to have for that person for giving me the opportunity to have that job in the first place on a silver platter. I still have to interview and kind of smash that interview. But the opportunity to get the interview was obviously something that I don't take for granted. But when they become a dick you're allowed to respond to them like they're a dick. You shouldn't just be like, oh, they gave me a job, they helped me out and I should just ignore the dickhead stuff they're doing or how they're talking to you with no respect and shit. I don't know. Maybe I'm, I'm, I'm mistaken. Same, let's continue. It's not about me. Let's continue. Um, I was believing I'm doing something good. Slowly, I started to feel better myself and decided not to retire, but keep on pushing her with me at the major events and festivals. We did a lot together and became friends. Later on, I even chat, started to call her my sister as we got really close while touring together. You'd imagine. August 2019, I was playing in Ibiza. I invited Daria to come with me to introduce her to some people around. It was at this trip where I introduced her to Etap Kyle. Oh my God. She not only gave her a career, restored her image after playing at those topless parties because I guess she wasn't getting the respect that she needed. She also introduced her to her fucking future hubby and BF, or her, future, her future boyfriend and potential hubby. Crazy, isn't it? So now she feels like, nah, you owe me, bitch. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know whose side I'm on now. <laughs> At first, I was against Nasha. Now I'm thinking, Daria, man, you you might have owed this girl like your life. I think. Anyway, um, uh, that was a trip where I introduced her to Etab Kyle because he was on the island and offered me to and offered me to meet. Already that day, it was obvious they liked each other. Ah, okay. What was he get trying to get a free or sign, or did you just wanted to meet her? I don't know. Let's continue. After much efforts and promotion from my personal side, my agent started to build diaries of independent schedule for gigs. She was getting there, and then the pandemic has arrived. Meanwhile, some of the Ukrainian promoters still didn't want to book her, and sometimes had to use my influence or power to push her. Shit. So what's why is diaries? <clears throat> If you're from Ukraine, please tell me what's what's wrong with Dari's reputation out there in Ukraine? Surely it's not just a topless DJ thing. Is a topless DJ thing that big of an issue? Are you guys such um, chin strokers and musical snobs that you don't take someone serious that comes from that circuit? Like they can't be serious. Because I remember Daria saying in that interview actually that some of the girls that play that topless DJ thing, some of them just didn't even DJ. They just had a mix playing and they pretend like they're DJing. But some obviously some of the girls on there were taking as a, as a serious opportunity to actually play in front of people, get better, and obviously try and build from that. Um, but I wonder what was the actual deal in Ukraine? Why are you guys so against her? 
from what Nas just said, I'm not sure if this is true. This could be just lies to make Nas just seem like a to seem like fucking Jesus Christ. I don't know, but I'm interested to know if you're from Ukraine or from that scene. Let me know in the comments why she's getting the cold shoulder in your country so much. Meanwhile, some of the Ukrainian promoters didn't want to book her. I was standing by her side as I believed that what I was doing. I saw the results of my job about her and the way that she was working. So I was proud of both of us. In 2020, during isolation and wavy lockdowns in Ukraine, I started the NCHTO events and Course Diary was part of it. Besides that, I made an interview with her for my new True Talk interview, which I checked out project, and we played together for my Beatport residency. In 2021, Etap Khan moved to Kiev. They started to live together. Since that moment, her behavior has changed. <laughs> Standard, isn't it? When someone gets a relationship, this is always the worst thing in friendships, isn't it? When somebody gets their first boyfriend or their first serious boyfriend or girlfriend or somebody that they're seriously in love with, like legitimately, it is quite brutal to go from being the center of their universe to being like an additional add-on whenever they whenever they can be bothered to call you or to remember you're alive. It really is brutal. You go from texting each other and having replies every second to suddenly having a reply every couple of days, maybe a week later, crazy stuff. They don't include you in their plans. They don't really check up on you. It's just a bit brutal to kind of get in. And I guess with girls, it's even worse because girls have a really girl best friends have far more close relationship than boys best friends i'd imagine right in terms of sharing everything and going out and whatnot especially if you're both single so to sort of go from hanging out with each other all the time especially djing wise to suddenly changing it i'd imagine also because these promoters are fucking janky i'd imagine once daria and etap car started dating there was some sort of talk behind the scenes that they decided to book them on more similar dates we don't want to be alone we don't want to be you know apart from each other we want to play the same set i mean i'd imagine some of that so they're definitely spending a lot more time together than they would do anyone else so that's must be brutal to deal with but anyway, it continues um since that moment her baby decided to change she would see me less she would not come to my place when i invited them to my friend's dinners a few times she was not sharing her goals and news with me anymore bruv honestly this is a bit imp how, how how old is nastia because this is a bit this is a bit weird man how old is she nastia dj age because i don't know man she's 35 years old how old is fucking daria because this seems a bit weird isn't it like you're just kind of bothered about this shit i guess it's annoying but hmm, daria kovosa agency oh she doesn't put her age there we don't know how old she is oh uh, we have no idea how old this lady is daria kovosa birthday Oh, so about the same age. Okay. They're about the same age. Okay. Not my bad. I'll take it back. They're about the same age. Um, I started to feel there is... Um, it says here she was born on February 1897. So they're about the same age. Da, 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 they feel there's something wrong going on, but kept on supporting and accepting. This February, just before the war started, we were supposed to leave together on February 24th. I was booking flights to EU with my daughter in Dari with Itap Kyle called me the day before February 23rd to find out some info about what was going on. They didn't share with me that they got married that day. Oh, really? They got married? But were seeking for useful information. She booked the same flight as us but the war arrived earlier and i was the one who called daria woke up her and told her to leave immediately when the war started in ukraine it was trying to dance music scene community made the open letter to the uh oh, did i do it twice oh no oh, i didn't print screen it probably did i oh let me see if i can see it the fall of ukraine 21st final finals going on signed a letter okay cool yeah, um, the open letter for the international dance music scene in order to boycott Russian artists. Uh, Daria and Etel Kyle have signed a letter. On the day when everyone was posting it, they also did it, but then they couldn't handle the negative feedback from the international audience, so they'd hid their post because they couldn't manage the criticism and negative comments from their followers. <laughs> they did it in order not to risk their positions, opportunities, and bookings. <laughs> and the amount of followers for what they got highly criticized by the Ukrainian community for stepping back for their actions. So, in a what kind of world is this? So, in in some sort of bizarre world, I don't know if this is actually true. Maybe it is the most true. Etap Kyle and Daria put up post, um, kind of asking the local or industrial community to boycott Russian artists as a response to the Russians' invasion of Ukraine. Russia's invasion of Ukraine. They then get loads of blowback from international audience. That's not Russian. For the most part, everything I heard online, reception-wise, regarding the war 
the, the Ukrainian, sorry, the Russian Ukrainian invasion, the, the Russian invasion of Ukraine, especially in the beginning, was mostly 99.9% .9 of it was pro Ukrainian. So I find it hard to believe at that time there was an element online, especially on Instagram, that was saying, oh, you guys are going against your more, whatever. That was very pro Putin, pro Russia. I don't really believe that's true. I don't, I don't know if that is true. But let's just believe what she says here. They did it in order to not risk their opposition to opportunities in bookings and the amount of followers for what they got highly criticized for being like for the Ukrainian community for stepping back on their actions. Daria told me that they were already moving to Berlin in the beginning of February, so they don't care much for what Ukrainian scene and community think of them. <laughs> Holy shit, of course, once a war kicks off and you know the local community needs them, they they fucking put their tails behind their bums and head off to Berlin. If I understand why Daria's pissed off, but you know, they they, they can do what they want, they're grown ups in it. The war's happening in Ukraine, and you need to. Move. They, so essentially, what it seems like, Itap Khan moved to Kiev to follow his girl. The war kicks off, and then they have to move again to obviously escape the war, and then they go to Berlin. I don't see the problem in this really, but hey, this conversation happened when we met on the 19th of March in Amsterdam during the dinner before the Vault Sessions charity event in Amsterdam 2020. Before that, the last time we saw each other was the beginning of October. When I realized it was a surprise, when I realized it, I was surprised by how long we weren't seeing each other, considering the fact that we were living with the same city. Then me and my Ukrainian partners um, decided to organize a charity event in NYC in July 1st, and I invited Daria because she was part of it. She refused my proposal, saying she's playing free time for Vault Sessions in Amsterdam that weekend, and she's so excited about it. I mentioned that Vault Sessions are our friends, and we can ask them to reschedule thingies for another weekend, but she still wasn't so enthusiastic about my idea, letting me know she doesn't want to change anything to an accept it. <laughs> Uh, there was one moment where she was giving her all the gigs then then another moment Daria, um, Daria girl turns around and is like nah nah you're, you can keep that you can keep that gig I'll stay here in Amsterdam thank you very much next to hubby in the beginning of April I started to work on some cancellations of the festivals where I was in the same lineup with Russian silent artists in the same time Ukrainian community was fighting for it too and when Glitch Festival was announced their full lineup of one of the main Ukrainian fighters Maya back back, back Back Lanova was left a comment under their post. It says as follows: Daria Ki and Etap Kerr. Guys, what, guys, while the whole Ukrainian scene is fighting against Russian artists in the lineups, you both just reset all our efforts while playing with them at the same festivals. Money or pride or dignity? Money, pride or dignity? They didn't react. Typical reaction from this couple. They didn't react. Typical reaction from this couple. While the Ukrainian scene was yeah, that's true. I guess what they're saying. If there's a, if there's a solidarity behind U Ukrainian artists and they're both Ukrainian, right? Um, it is a bit strange that they'll be on the same lineup as other artists. But again, I just don't think it's fair to expect everybody to re to react to stuff that's going on in the world the same as you are. Regardless if it's kind of real, it's kind of stuff that's hitting home because it's your home country. Regardless of stuff that's really close to you in terms of issues that you're really caring about. I don't think it's fair to expect everybody else to react the same way you react. What I do think is cool is that when these issues do arise they're pretty good in terms of highlighting and showing up the people that shouldn't be in your life. If these, if this is really a key part of your identity. If you really believed in dealing with world issues and politics and whatever's happening in affairs and inequality, da, 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 and a certain people in your scene or in your peer group who don't care about those kind of things to a really destructive level or to a level that you can't take anymore, you can just X them out of your life. You, they, they don't need to hide behind things. You know I mean, because it's pretty blatant when they don't want to support it or when they don't have any feelings towards it or when they have feelings that don't really line up to how you look at it. But to come out and out people like this and whine about them in public is a little bit gross, in my opinion. But again, you're free to do what you want to do. Um, while the whole Ukrainian scene was fighting against injustice, fighting for justice, sorry, in Ukrainian topic in the general, was completely ignored by Daria and Etap Kar since February 24th. And they were behaving like they are not Ukrainians at all. Check their IG post and you will not find anything about the situation in Ukraine besides reposting some stories they did nothing. Because speaking out was always been discomfort and discomfort. What? Comfort? discomfort and confrontation zone you can't step in if you are if you are love dependent narcissist opportunist love dependent narcissist opportunist how can she sometimes i wonder as well like does she not know what she did during the whole playground stuff is that not an issue is that completely okay because i guess it's a silent killer it's not like as gruesome as seeing kids and, and ladies and mums and old people getting blown up to bits in the street but if you go to different countries and you inadvertently spread covid around during the peak peak horror times of covid when we had no idea it was as probably not serious or mild as it is now it's not back much of an issue but then because your friends aren't reposting or posting stuff about ukraine every single minute of the day they seem to be more egregious than you i don't know man 
I don't know. I think going to I, I don't know. Would you com- could you compare being silent about Ukra- the the Russian invasion of Ukraine, Russia's invasion of Ukraine, and performing at playgraves? Like, what's the actual worst offense, especially at the peak of the playgrave when people are looking? Especially if you're flipping last year, right? You're an international quote unquote commercial DJ who gets paid again not to pocket watch, but you get paid probably more than five thousand euros per gig. Let's say more than three thousand to be to see that modest more than 3,000 per gig probably up was up until 30 or something crazy like that especially if you look at somebody like um I forgot the other person who just said that he gets paid if rates wise but imagine someone like that and people think okay you should you should be okay but then you're still going out and playing these crazy raves in these far-flung places um and not really giving a shit posting yourself up all over there taking pictures being I mean just I don't know I just find this a little bit rich coming from her personally but again it was already obvious which direction they chosen. Leave in the comment, I have another word for you, shame, under Nasha Krevis' peace post. Darius feeling okay to play with her and other Russian careless artists in the same lineup because her career is more important than unity. Okay, cool. She's playing with Nuu. That's a big one. She's playing with um, Nina Kravis, who's the kind of uh, the, the person that Nasha seems to hate the most. Her career is more important. Um, in the order to make a change and difference to the name of the home and country. When I started to see it and started to analyze these things properly, it was hard for me to realize what that solid number of international artists unite to give support to Ukraine and Serg and Sergei with Daria pretend nothing special is happening, refusing to the office of her colleagues to unite and pull up to our festivals where they share the lineup with Russian ignorant artists. This makes no difference because between them and those Russians, because the principles are the same. Keep on silent and save your ass and sake of your own business. People will talk a bit and then forget which is unfortunately true people did talk a bit especially in the beginning when Nasha was really being silent about it but now probably people don't care that whole band thing that she had people don't really give a shit about and personally for me I don't really feel like there should be this kind of blanket cancellation of people I feel like if you're running a festival or a club night and you are extremely politically active and you do care about these issues and seeing Nasha or seeing Nina Kravis not be vocal or see Nasha be vocal they should inform your booking policy if you're pro Putin you should be like cool I'm not going to book Daria if you're if you're not going to book Nasha sorry if you're pro if you're anti-Putin you should be like cool I'm going to book flipping whatever you know what I mean you should be your politics should really guide your booking principles but also I understand from a business point of view especially post-pandemic these clubs have taken a brutal beating especially ones that are like outside the the key kind of um, cities around europe and stuff they've taken absolute beatings so the last thing they can do is be picky about who plays who doesn't play because they essentially need the money to come through those doors and need bums and seats and need drinks to be sold in order to make sure that they can survive another season to pay their staff to keep that local community going to pay local DJs like, there's a lot of infrastructure that goes around local, local community that goes around economy that goes around the whole of that club culture so it's not as easy just to say the clubs don't book this person and it's also not as easy to say to the artists who have been out of work for ages I comes again myself I'm a very mediocre level DJ in terms of like my grade not in terms of my skill level my skill level is obviously high but in terms of where i'm playing at i'm fairly low in terms of playing at local bars and pubs and stuff and even my gigs have completely dried up from where they used to be pro pre-pandemic i was playing basically thursday to sunday most weekends in local bars and clubs and some warehouses spaces here and there and then post-pandemic things have kind of quieted down and essentially all those bars and pubs i was playing it have basically realize that they could basically just have a spotify dj play or have a decent playlist and they don't need to really book many DJs are playing those kind of nights because it's a bit of a waste of money especially since the turnout for most of these places isn't as much as it was pre-pandemic also so there's a lot of things going around there a lot of a lot of things so it's not really as easy to say hey you should just pull out do this whatever because people have family to support do you know what I mean it's just hard to say I don't know I just think I think it's a little bit unfair and a little bit immature and naive on Nash's point of view in my opinion but also I respect her because she's clearly fighting a good fight and clearly believes in this issue wholeheartedly it's fighting for Ukrainian justice is keeping the the war over there alive on social media on her end of things by reminding people constantly even if it's not in the local if it's not in the current news rotation so she's doing her bit as much as she can and holding her friends to account but i just think it's in, it's kind of in bad taste to do stuff like this calling him out like this is a bit weird but again maybe there's more to the story than we know i was going through some process too making a mess with nina opening conversations with cancellation of some festivals collecting money from my fund besides personal stuff which was even more messy including daria in the end of april i started to work to rebuild the lineup of my ncHTO showcase at the hall which was confirmed for the program in january 2022 the lineup was supposed to be kolaha um ben 
Benjinek, Live, Gail, me and Daria back to back. I realize this lineup is impossible because nobody could make besides me and Daria since I introduced her to the app. To, to hit up Kyle, we have the chat and Telegram and I wrote that they need to be support and asked if they could play their back to back because I wanted to keep the lineup 100% Ukrainian for a reason. Sergei refused it straight away, but Daria got... Oh, so who's Sergei? Sergei, I guess, is Etap Kyle. Why does he call himself Etap Kyle if his name's Sergei? Sergei's a better name than Etap Kyle, isn't it? Okay, maybe you know, continue. Um, Sergei refused straight away, but Daria got even worse. First, she said she forgot about it. Then she said she needs to check the flight schedule. So she left that on red. <laughs> Imagine the person that you introduced to your agents. You took around to all the best managers. You got them sets and boiler room. You did all that stuff. And then they start, they, they leave you on red and stuff. I understand why Nash is pissed. I get it. I get it. <laughs> I get it. <laughs> Honestly, DJ World is fucking brutal, man. One minute you're up and everyone wants to wants you wants to suck your pussy. Next minute you're down and no one wants to be associated with you because you're bad for business. It's fucking brutal. Uh, Daria got even worse. She said she forgot about it. Then she said she needs to check her flight schedule for that weekend as she was going to Colombia for her gig. So maybe that would be a reason for her not to play hall as we agreed. I was like, fine, as we have the same agent, I'm going to ask him myself. Oh, come on, Nastya, you fucking knock. Oh, what a snitch. Gross. Proper cop energy. I'm going to ask myself, and I did already feel she was looking for an excuse to pull out. Next day, I texted her saying I've checked her flights and she has no problem playing at all on the 18th as a flight to the 19th. At that point, I already felt like she was taking me for the red alert emotion, and I don't understand why. After all I've done for her, after calling her my sister, uh, after <laughs> not. <laughs> people that can honestly because i don't have this in, i don't have this ability to cry like this online i don't even have this ability to cry this in, in my private personal life i just dust things off you can't take things personal when pressure comes to industry stuff you cannot take it personally business is business but i would never in my wildest dreams be crying it's about something especially i wouldn't want to give somebody the the satisfaction that they've hurt me this much i wouldn't want them to know that they've disappointed me this level i wouldn't want them to even to know i'll keep it to myself and cry into my pillow facing into it like <laughs> muffledly but i wouldn't want to let anyone know that this is actually how i felt because god damn it now you are bearing it all out here in it it seems that like she actually wanted to be you know, she's probably jealous of Etap Kyle does she want to be in a relationship with, with fucking Daria or what what's going on here it's a bit weird after doing nothing wrong or bad to her I must ask what well, apart from blasting her online and shit and always telling her to post stuff I don't know um, I, ask, I, I must ask for lunch as a favour wasn't it so easy to be my friend and to be there when I needed it this talk happened on April the 22nd a month before our horse show and showcase was happening, just two days before BD, which was, I also reminded her, um, telling her that not to do this for me. Her answer was, I don't have motivation. I'm playing old tracks. I don't search for new music. I'm in a bad mood. Well, how selfish is that? Who is in a, who is in a good mood now? Is she telling me this to me? She still had one month ahead to make an effort to create a good set. She made me feel like I'm walking around her with open hand like a beggar. <laughs> but what the fuck? Is it really happening? Was I that stupid not to see who I'm helping to? Was I that blind in trust I can see a fool use me like that? I know why she said no to me about whore. She is just afraid not to be able to repeat such a random success with her first whore set which received 1 million views. Oh, come on. Now she's, so she, well, she's saying she didn't want to go on a second time because she was afraid he wouldn't get as many views. Huh? That's a weird thing. Would you want to repeat the success or just show that you're that lit and get two million? She said she, she, so she simply didn't want to play for me to keep using the success of one promoting herself. Fair enough. She doesn't understand such a thing is happening just a few times in life of an artist and it's not a formula. It's just an algorithm which, make, which takes some content or higher results. Whatever set she will play next time, it won't even be close to the success she got with the first. She's contrary to herself. She just said here that it's algorithms, it's not always about you, but then said the next one won't be successful as well. Like, God damn it. It's an illusion to think I got famous because it's genius or special. It's just a lucky moment. I got similar moments throughout my 17 years of my career. I know how that works. Business over friendship. Realizing that we was not able to do such a small thing for me. I needed to make me feel sick. In the beginning, I got angry. You are angry. You're still angry now. But she didn't want to talk. She said, let's move this conversation to tomorrow. Then she was silent for the next four days. <laughs> honestly how brutal is it to leave her so leaving somebody unseen that's done that much for you that she's you know i don't know if this she did as much as she says but still 
brutal. Then I was like, wow, I cannot believe it. Maybe I don't understand something. So I texted her again. The lack of understanding was all over our chat. I didn't know how to behave when we gonna meet in Belgium, where Daria and Sergei played back to back before me following the Saturday, the 30th of April. I told her we need to talk personally in real life and just two of us. I offered her two options to meet in Ghent before our gig or Berlin on Monday, the May 1st. Having two opportunities to fix our friend relationship and a personal conversation on Saturday, the 30th, she asked me to move our meeting to Monday, the 1st, and then end texting me on her phone on May the 2nd, said, hello, can you speak now since then coward daria cavosa doesn't exist to me <laughs> coward daria um well i felt like the mirror in my wonderland got broken hard reality reached my front mind i had to go through lots of pain about it yes my fault yes i was stupid yes i was wrong and silly about her this is my problem bro this sounds way too she's way too emotional about this girl is there some sort of like lesbianic energy going on here? Did she really like fall in love with this girl slightly and didn't really realize her until she got up, she got hooked up with Etap Kaya or something? This is bizarre, man. This is super possessive. Like she doesn't owe you anything. Like a response, a reply, a meeting. It's a good thing if she does give it to you as a friend, don't get me wrong, but she doesn't owe you that. And sometimes get the message. Sometimes people don't want to tell. It's like I had it before. I said it before plenty of times. I think. You know, on one side, I can agree because I said that plenty of times on this podcast. I think sometimes a friendship breakup is way more hurtful than a relationship breakup because I think relationships you kind of know in your head that there's a possibility that it could go to the aisle or it could just end. There's a possibility, right? You could move away, they could move away, they could pass away, things could move, whatever. You could just, you know, end up having a lot of space in between, not meeting, blah blah. Things change. Um, but relationship, sorry, but friendship breakups are horrible because you never think you're never going to lose a friend. You think friends are going to be around forever. Even if you don't speak for ages, like I've got friends from school and from uni that I don't speak to every day. I speak to maybe once or twice a year, but if I meet them up in public and we go out to a bar somewhere, it's like, it's like we were back in uni days. We can speak for hours and hours and hours and hours. So you never think it's going to end. But when they do end, like I've had a couple where people came up to me and said, hey, or text me and said, hey, I don't want to be your friend anymore. Stop texting me. And that pain is something that I can't even describe how that feels when you, someone tells you, I don't want to talk to you anymore as a friend. Not even sexually, nothing to do with that. Just a friend. I don't like you anymore. Go away from me. Delete my number. You don't exist. That can hurt a lot. But sometimes as well, it's your own fault because... There are sometimes messages or signs that are laid beforehand that aren't as painful because sometimes people don't want to be jerks, right? They just want to let you down easily. So they do sometimes give you messages and signs and stuff that you can basically ascertain that, hey, that's not really the friend I used to have beforehand. Just let it lie. But keep pushing it and pushing it. Sometimes you get put in this position where suddenly you get a, a real stark reminder that you are not their priority at all. They don't care about you one bit. Get, get away from me. Leave me alone. And I also think as a grown up, as a woman, you know what I mean, she's, she's a woman with a husband and a kid and stuff. This is very embarrassing, like very embarrassing. You should be busy. You've got a kid to look after. You've got a household to keep steady. You've got a career going. You've got a label and stuff like you should be way more preoccupied about those things than worrying about some girl that you met in 2019. Like this is a bit, this is a bit lame, really lame. Um, Da, 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 continues i was being so kind and open one door to my heart another door to my intentional success da, diary was not there when i needed her she couldn't support me on some basic levels D relax this is about the politics thing it's not about her not being there as a friend the politics things happened at the same the russia the the war with russia and ukraine happened at the same time that diary kind of got with that up cars so maybe the timing was a bit off but this is more so her not being super super pro ukraine and kind of raging on anyone online and attacking everybody and going after nina kravis and posting things all the time you're allowed you're allowed not to do that if you don't want to maybe she just wants to have her social media be a kind of safe space a place where she can kind of escape from all that stuff that's happening every day because it's her country and she knows people there blah 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 i don't know whoever the happening i just think this is really childish personally for me some people told me nasha don't do it and let it go you are higher than this no you're not you're not higher than this you're a fucking bizarre lady life will teach her and she will face her karma experiencing the same shit in the future why what, what about your karma for going from fucking playgraves are you gonna get karma for that or not but i can't handle it and i don't want to let it go and close my eyes to it it's still in my power to speak about it i suppose to still about her now it's too comfy for her and uh, no see this is this is what i don't like she wants to counsel them. She wants them to what, have no career because they didn't post flags on their fucking feed or something. You have to chill out. But let's just see it again. What is this? Is a, sorry, let's go again. But I can't handle it. And I don't want to let it go. 
and close my eyes on it. It's still in my power to speak out about her. It's too comfy for her and her husband who definitely participated in our breakup, surely giving bad advices and using dire stupidity. <sighs> and love to him in order to make us separate and hurt me yo i think she was in love with daria i honestly do think that she was in love with her she didn't know it until etap kyle got involved this is so weird just for personal reasons she was still using help of my agent with whom i built platform for people like her collecting contacts and building up a relationship with promotes for over 10 years of course she's gonna use her agent you gave it to her well, that's what agents for no she's a good dj though but nothing more primitive selfish opportunities with no honor people with no position slippery cunning primitive entrepreneurs i want to ask you all never associate her with me and me with her she lost my respect and she even turned to be disgusting she's a percent fast food entertainer without personality for me i don't like this this is like when guys this is like no this is like when girls sleep with guys and then afterwards they say oh he's ugly anyway he had a small dick but you still let him fuck you this is the same thing when guys do the same thing with a girl when she breaks up with them oh she's tall whatever da, da, da. she sucked a million dicks yeah but you still wifed her up you can't turn around after the fact and then start calling a fast food entertainer. You invested all the time into her. You gave her all your contacts. You essentially gave her your flipping kidney. You know what I mean, she was basically a daughter to you or a sister that you never had, whatever it may be. Come on, man. Now she's fast food entertainer. Without personality for me, there's no connection between us two. It's not the first time when I'm facing disappointments in my life, when I'm too kind to some people and naive about her feelings to me. Um, this is the price for initiative and trust and I'm paying it fully. I, lo I really love and believe in people and humans. <sighs> yeah, all right. Life is teaching me hard to stop believing my dream about humanity and finally become a rational strategist, not a noble. F Yo, this person, she is so full of herself. Not a noble figure who engaged in endless charity. Go and jump off a cliff, Nastya. What shit are you talking right now? But I have an urgent need for justice. Yeah, all right. But this is what promoted me to write this text. I can't get over the fact that so much of the ugly truth about one person is left behind the scenes. So she wants to be the person to uncover everyone's ugly truths. She, she like, you have to be careful, man. Once you like, don't throw stones in a glass house, mate. You don't want people to start uncovering your ugly truths. I can't afford to ignore this and keep quiet. I know how much of you will react to this. This is shock content, another unpleasant scandal story associated with last year, but it's much more important for me to tell the truth. Sometimes you just need to shut the fuck up, man, than to think about the consequences of action. It's very interesting though, for, a, for an Eastern European or for a Central European, usually you think of them as being very stalwart, very stoic. They kind of internalize their pain a lot. I mean, you, that's the kind of impression you get, but she she's giving very, um very kind of western kind of personality traits isn't it? in terms of like center of attention sharing too much information victim complex like it's never my fault you incredibly narcissistic maybe i'm, I'm wrong because maybe that's how eastern european men, women and men are but i always get the impression that they're very cold they're very kind of emotionless or they kind of deal with their emotions behind closed doors they don't talk about certain things in public um do you know what i mean they're very kind of mature and they kind of mature in early age it kind of feels like but she seems like a big baby this you wouldn't imagine this lady had like a, a daughter with a husband and shit you know what i mean like you wouldn't imagine it at all this is a big woman but it's much more important to me than that da, 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 da. um i can't get over the fact that so much of the ugly truth about one person is left behind the scenes it's just not fair <laughs> this woman's horrible man she wants to end her career because she didn't honestly because she didn't return a text or she didn't want to do a back-to-back -back set a fucking horror or something like come on relax i can't afford to ignore this and keep quiet and i know most of you will react to this this is i cannot insist i cannot insist on you i cannot insist on you not working with her or affect her own choices but i definitely don't suggest you work with darius without agreements on papers yo you guys are this is awful this is awful, man. What are you doing, Nastya? She's taking things for granted and she's not able to pay her bills. She kind of person who will betray you for personal interest and will not give a fuck about you um, after you give a fuck about her. But I've done all DJs do this. This isn't, isn't this the, the 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 most operandi of most people that get on stage and do this kind of job from what I've assessed anyway. She has no values and rules only for beneficial collaboration. Fixed on paper could work. Um, don't believe in solidarity and trust working with such people. This is a warning. <sighs> so, who do you guys believe? Who's in the, who's in the right here? Who's in the wrong? Nasha versus um, Dario Cavosa and Etap Kao. 
an absolute shit show of an affair. Personally, my finishing thoughts on this are Nash is a big raging DJ, big raging baby and an incredible drama queen to go to this extent to somebody to attack them because they didn't respond to the war in Ukraine the same way that you wanted to respond to the war in Ukraine, which has been a very aggressive, somewhat, somewhat people will suggest it's you basically trying to repair your reputation after all the hurt, abuse that you got through the playgrave stuff. But again, I'm not going to be that cruel and I'm going to extend some courtesy and say maybe benefit the doubt because it was something that affected you directly and it was something that came out of the blue that suddenly a kind of charitable side of you woken up and you went to take action cool that's on you but it doesn't mean everyone else has to react the same way and the fact that she's now bemoaning and kind of criticizing her for getting into a relationship and ignoring her and not having Nasha be the center of her attention is just absolutely wild and then at the end basically telling people to not book her because she's not a good person to her only it's absolutely insane also ridiculously insane especially in the economy that we're in now especially with the current state affairs of the way there are now it's just insane to try and get somebody's you know food taken away from their table because you don't like how they acted towards you or because they left you on red or seen or something it's just absolutely insane ridiculously insane ridiculously childish but again on another side of things if you are that politically motivated and you do think it's important to speak up about what's happening in ukraine and you do think it's important to make a stand against russian artists who are being quiet about putin and whatnot then maybe if somebody like a Daria comes across your purview and she's wanting to be politically correct, maybe it's beneficial to kind of, you know, distance yourself from them and take them out of your peer group. Fair enough. But it doesn't mean you go to the extent of trying to cancel them because they're not agreeing with you. They expose themselves because now, you know, they, you see what the true colors are. But it doesn't mean you have to kind of go out of your way to make sure everybody knows that they're a piece of shit because they don't agree with your politics. That's fucking insane. Really, really is. But again maybe i'm in the wrong what do i know let me know in the comments down below if you agree or if you disagree